Ladies and gents, we're back with another episode mm. of the Double Bogey mm. Show. We're back. Uh, presented by Nicolay Law. Tyler, give it to us. What? Nicolay Law. Nicolay Law, do you mean our best friend in the whole world, well, Russell? That's what I meant. And I understand why you didn't know what I was sp- talking about, because I didn't refer to him as that. I know. And it's it's so confusing that we're on a first name basis with, with the, Russell. With our lawyer. Russell Nicolay um, of Nicolay law thanks for clearing that up again the whole first name thing the last name really throws me for a loop i mean maybe we just got to get a little unfamiliarized maybe we should give him a call next week huh okay i'm down should we wait i'm still i'm still waiting we'll give him a jingle next week be like hey man what's up i hit a window the other day who's liable i actually took a picture of a course trying to say that the golfer is liable but i think russell can get around that I think the homeowner's liable. I think so too. That's, that's what, what you that's get. what homeowner's insurance on the golf course is for. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah. Why would you need to buy extra insurance if you live on a golf course if you, the homeowner, isn't liable? Correct. See, we just did Russell's job for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just it's so much chit chatting of becoming a legal brain myself. Um, but yeah, if you guys are ever injured, if you ever find yourself in a pickle, who should you call, Jake? Who are you gonna call, Russell? Nicolay. Nicolay. Uh, Nicolaylaw.com. Yeah. You, you guys get it. Russell, first name basis. Give him a jingle. Fear the beard. <laughs> yes. Um, Jake. Guys. Ryan. We're back. Full strength. Come well, we on. were full strength last week. Last week was a pre, uh, it was a pre-recorded episode because Tyler. Another kid. Another kid. This one podcast more. is one more kid heavy. You got your foursome. Got him. We got the fucking, we got the scramble squad ready to go. Do you think your kids will invite you to be the fourth on their team when you're older? If I'm doing a good job as a dad, they will. That'll be a great litmus test. Yep. I think what it comes down to, it doesn't come down to how good of a golfer you are. It comes down to what type of person Mm -hmm. you are on the course. They got to respect me as a player enough to want me on their team. And they got to respect me as a person enough to want my vibes on the team. Yeah, because they're like, it's their time to be competitive. Mm -hmm. Uh, Your competitive your competitive time is over. Uh, well, I mean, personally, not. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I mean, out to the open. It, I'm know, not playing organized sports. Yeah, like, you're, they're going to invite you with to pay the entry fee. Correct. To pay yep. for the drinks. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. To, you know, buy them supper afterwards. Uh, to p- pretty much just do what dads do well, for their kids. And have one good shot just to remind them that you still Correct. got it. Yeah, Make a 25-foot sure. putt uh, to save birdie on a hole that you really needed it on. Yeah, well, it's going to be in hopefully in 21 years if we're if we're drinking. We'll be, we'll be in 21 years. I will be the straight man. I'll have my hybrid out. I'll yep. pop it 180 yards down the fairway. Yep. And then bombs away for all three boys. You mm-hmm. fucking swing your pants off, kids. That's what I'm here for. That'd be that'd be. That'd be fun. Yeah. To be a have a foursome in a scramble tournament with your boys. Yeah, dude. Like I'm, that that'd be fucking sweet. I know. I'm pumped. That's that's granted, that, it's gonna be a while. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a while. Yeah, I mean, wait a little we'll bit. for sure play in some when they're in high school, but it'll be might be me dragging them to it. I know the the oldest kid's got the itch. He's got the the golf bug. The middle one, not so much. And the other one is a week old. So we'll see. Yeah, the jury's I, I, still out on the yeah. youngest one. Yeah, we'll figure that I would one like out. to see more, um, like, f- like father son, almost like junior, like let's say a two man scrambler, yeah. two man best ball. So like, like uh, what's the name of that tournament? They do that. Yeah, yeah, the, um, they do the PNC. But yes, I'm talking, yes. I, I'm talking more like, uh, just like more locally. Okay, okay, um, casual so, ones. Yeah, so like from the ages of, you know. They have the age division of 10 to 12 and those kids golf with their dads. And then they have the 13 to 15 with their dad. Like they're all pay- all these kids are paired up with their dads playing a two man scramble, two man best ball. And then here's the thing too: the dads get to play from the front tees. Yeah, the old guy tees. Or whatever tees that the, these kids are playing. The I senior tees. <sighs> Fuck yeah, dude. My 180 yard drive from the senior tees is gonna be money. That's a weird. I would like to ask Grandpa Dave this, but because he still plays the whites. He plays whites. He's, he would never play for. OK, teams. OK, thank God, because yeah. I didn't know if there was going to be a time where I had I mean, to move up uh, either to the like the seniors or the reds or anything like that. I was going to say, if, if that was the case, that would be like a sad day to admit, admit well, that you're moving up or yeah. like, yeah, the, 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 the first round of like. Boys, I just like I don't have it. I don't have the distance anymore. Like yeah. I have to move up to the senior tees. Guys, aren't the whites the old guy tees? 
No, no, no. no. Like at Oxbow, they have um, the grays are in front of the whites, yep. and the grays would be the senior tees. Oh. And they're probably 30 to 40 yards ahead of, of the whites. Certain courses, golds are the senior tees. Yep. Yeah, okay. In my head, it's always been blacks are for low handicaps, blues are for mid handicappers, and then whites are for like high handicappers and old guys. I mean, for the most part, it, most okay. courses, yeah. that's yeah, what yeah. you have. But like on other courses, you have, have you have tees. six tees. You have yeah. the reds, then the silvers, the golds, the the whites, the blues, the blacks. Uh, well, and uh, like all of those colors, I feel like that's mostly universal. But why can't we just have a universal color standard? Yeah, because some courses will put the golds behind the whites. Well, like, uh, yeah, like Oxbow is um, there. I think there's like greens and grays like mm. there's no reds it's greens and grays that are in front of the whites interesting um so it, i don't know it's all confusing and then it's like hey what what tea are we playing today and then you're rolling up to the next tea box you think you're playing the whites but the whites is actually what the seniors play and the grays is actually what the whites it's just this whole Let's standardize this shit yeah well and you guys have played on courses where you'll play like the blue and whites so like sometimes yeah like yep Yep, oh, yeah. blue That's golds. Kind of fun. It's, a, it's a hybrid. So like um, this hole being a little bit longer, uh, your scorecard will put you at the golds in front of the blues or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that 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 that's kind of fun. I I do enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Um, Jake, you were telling us uh, you went you went out after work last Friday, dude. Um, yeah. We're looking for like a you know kind of like a nice twilight nine well, holer and so I golfed that same day. Yeah, actually, I ran into Tyler at <laughs> oh, the golf no course. Shit. Paternity leave. One, I've golfed one single time. And I finish up my round, and who's in the fucking parking lot? Really? Yeah, Jakey boy and Allen. Yeah, parked right next to Tyler and everything like yeah. that. It's completely on accident. And Tyler got the new Chevy, so I didn't even recognize. Yeah, him. Oh, different I vehicle got. even. Yeah, it's yeah. like uh, yeah, he bosses out on paternity leave, and you're like, ah, fuck, we might as well leave at two, three o'clock. <laughs> you know, early busted. round, and, yeah. and then you run into the boss of the golf course. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> now, luckily, it was like five twenty, so you were good. I was good. You were good. Yep. So you finished up your round at five twenty. Yeah. Listen to this shit. So I'm assuming you started at like three thirty at, at the latest. Wrong. Here, wait, wait, let's go. Let's go chronologically. Let's start the day with Tyler round. Then we'll finish out with. Okay. I started my round of golf at two o'clock on the dot. Right on the nuts. Nine holes. Nine holes took me three hours and twenty minutes. It was the longest nine holes I've ever played in my entire life. That's the average, eight, like, 18 holes. Right. I, I have for sure played 18 holes in, in three hours and 20 minutes. It was fucking bananas. So what's going on? I don't... So right away, it was just packed, right? And there was a fort. So it was just me and my buddy. It was just... We were two some. We were walking. And... uh and uh, about half, right away, it was super packed, right? So we teed off right at two. We waited in the middle of the fairway for this group of four in front of us, but it was fine because we could see a group in front of them on the tee box. And so we're like, oh, it's going to be a slower day, but we'll hopefully keep pace. And we finish up hole one. The other group is still hasn't teed off yet. And well, we could see the other group in front of the fairway. So we're not mad at the group in front of us. Like we under, we see that they're being slowed down by another yeah. group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was just log jam. And until eventually the group in front of them started to distance themselves and the group in front of us wouldn't let us play through. Oh, really? And eventually there was no group in front of them and they were just the slowest fucking foursome I have ever witnessed in my entire life. Why? What, what, what was making them slow? So it started off, they were just slow because there was a group in front of them. And then I think they got used to that pace and they got hammered. Mm. in fucking not in not even i mean nine holes is the whole round so they right. had to get hammered in like three rounds and three no holes no bev cart and so they they're for sure just bringing on their own bo own boost which is, uh, or the devil's letty yeah i there was booze there, there was booze they were fucked up and the they were just they were going so slow that like every single hole we were both sitting at the tee box together and like they were just taking their fucking time teeing off and the group behind us would catch up and sit at the tee box for, with us while we waited for that group to get out of the fairway. And there was an old dude in the group behind us that was so upset that he called the clubhouse like three times and they sent no one out there to get those guys moving. And the marshal at this course is no one. New marshal, around. new oh, marshal, really okay. nice guy. Ah, damn it. I, we can't bitch well, about the yeah, marshal anymore. I, I guess that's what we've been asking for. Wonder if he got fired. It, I hope. 
because that other guy sucked and this new guy is great. He's a delight. Yeah, um, I mean, the marshal at this course, known around town for being the biggest. Yeah, you just especially at, at his age, you don't you don't want that that reputation. Yeah, nothing like, uh, being a, a shitty marshal. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just not a reputation you want to you want at 60, 70 some years old. When it comes to the funeral, people are going to be like, how was Dale? So what kind of a dick? The kind of old dick guy. Head. The old guy that was calling the clubhouse wasn't calling the clubhouse. He he part works part time at that course. Oh, so he was calling the marshal directly and leaving voicemails. So the marshal, my assumption is that it was also couples night. That the marshal, once couples night started, he's done for the day. So the marshal wasn't there to get that group in front of us. His ass is moving. Mm. So this old guy was just leaving fucking hate voicemails on the marshal's phone for three hours. And event, so we got to hole nine, right? It's the final fucking hole. We get up to the tee box and this foursome is just standing there. No one, it's a par three. No one's on the green and they are literally just standing there. We can see a ball in, in the fairway in between them, which is, it's a really short hole. Um, they're just standing there. We're like, what is going on? We didn't say anything. We're sitting back by our tees. It was two gals and two guys. They were at the women's tees. And finally, the one guy's like, hey, we got golf to play. Let's go. And the one lady looks at him. She's like, leave us alone. We're chit-chatting. That's a group in front of you? Yep. So <sighs> they proceeded to finish their fucking conversation before teeing off, which was another two minutes. So the only reason it took that long is because these guys were having fucking tea time at every tea box. I've never been more frustrated with a group in my entire life. And I got yelled at and charged by a dude in jean shorts once. I, the, how, how old was the lady the, ch chatting in front of you? She, there was one gal that was probably like 35, 40. And I think it was a, a younger couple and their parent, one of the couple's parents. I would have like, like I, cause I get, um, I, I get pretty like, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Irritable mm -hmm. with that type of stuff. And when I get irritable, I tend to just like uh, sometimes lash out. Mm -hmm. And it would have been one of those moments. Yeah, it I would have. I would have. I would have been. My body would not have let me hold that in. If if it wasn't on the night, the final hole, I would have for sure said something because it was like, what am I gonna do? I'm a hundred yards from my car. Yeah. So I did the math. That's 22 minutes per hole. Yep. Yeah. Which absolutely checks out because I timed the first couple holes. I'm like, holy fuck. Because I was supposed to get the kids from daycare. And I'm like, I'm not going to be able to. I had time. So I had some pa important papers in my car for to bring to daycare. But I knew I wasn't going to be able to go pick my kids up. So I called my wife. And I had time when I was on hole seven or hole six. What, what's the? It would be seven. I had time to go from the seven tee box back to the parking lot. Give my wife, the, set the papers out, unlock my car and like set the papers out on the front seat. For her to grab them, go back to the tee box and not miss a fucking beat. I am. But my, dude, my, it's, my body is like it, it, there's a flame starting mm -hmm. inside right now. Well, and the thing was like, I, God, I wish I would have seen the ladies chit chatting earlier and realized that that was the problem because I would have said something. But it was also super fucking frustrating to just learn that fact on the final hole knowing that it all could have been solved with a conversation oh if you want to chit chat go to the bar You're like how about you chit chat while i hit my fucking drive and i play through you didn't did you ever consider hitting into him uh many times uh like uh like uh let's say they were 300 out and maybe like hit like hitting a drive with them 300 out it's not going to hit them but it may be like it's going to roll up you know 20 yards behind them or whatever so it, i did hit the best seven seven iron of my entire life and basically did hit into them i did too by the way this last weekend um, go on it was the purest seven oh. it went like 240 yards jesus so i mean wind at my back but yeah. it was still just juiced everything about it was right I, I couldn't hit the fucking driver, so I hit two in the water. This was hole six. Hole six, that really straight par four with the little tree right in front of the wonky you green. You hit a seven iron on that hole? I did. I'll tell you why. I couldn't hit the driver to save my fucking okay. life. Um, I topped two of them into that little water right in front of the tee box. And then I was oh. like, fuck it. I'm Give me my seven, Connor. I need to just get something in play. Yeah. 
and I hit the best seven iron of my entire life. It rolled up like five, six yards short of the green. Uh, yeah, on your fish shot. Uh, yeah, but uh, those, <laughs> those first two were my uh, breakfast balls because I didn't use a breakfast ball in the round before. Yeah, I love the carryover mental yeah. breakfast ball. So For like, sure. If yeah, gonna, I'm doing that. I, you got to keep those babies in your pocket, you know? Definitely. So it was my breakfast ball from that round and the previous round that I had cashed in and saved. Okay. Yeah, so, I, I, I don't mind it. So I'm lying one, 10 yards out from the green. <laughs> uh, but it, is easy. Like everything about it, it had a nice little tight draw on it. It got up into the fucking jet stream. So the wind took it an extra 40 yards. Oh, and just everything about it was made me completely forget about those two top drives. Yeah, that's fucking mint. Uh, but yeah, and it rolled right up into it was right next to their push carts. And they this they were fucking scrambling too. I forgot to mention that. They were scrambling the entire time. Dude, scrambling, it does not make you go any faster. I yep. I'm I now fully subscribe to the ideology that scrambling makes you golf slower i disagree with that no i'm i'm just saying if you if you like most of the time if all of us were to scramble we would probably go faster because we're good golfers and we can, <laughs> no we're not i don't know like we're we un- well, it's kind golfers. of an interesting point because like we understand how to keep pace of play that mean that term of good so golfer. It, yeah if you look at it like all right everybody hits a shot off the tee and After that, you kind of know which ball you're going to take. So the other three, like uh, one cart goes and gets the one guy's ball. The other cart goes and gets the other two balls. And then that first cart is going to go to the ball that you're going to hit your second shot from. Yeah. So to go like to the ball, grab it, come back to the one guy, survey your shot, wait for the other three people to hit. That does take a little bit of time versus just like you're already going to your ball to pick it up. If you were to just stop grab a club, hit it mm-hmm. like I, I it's kind be, of interesting whether scrambling does slow down pace of play or not. See, I would agree with it if everybody had their own cart or everyone was walking, then maybe scrambling is slower. OK, yeah. But if yeah, we got yeah. we got. Two carts, right? One cart's going straight to the ball we're going to use. We we pretty much know what we want to get the other use. guy's ball for the other guy in the cart's ball yep. first. Yep. The other cart is running around grabbing the other balls and those first two guys are just hitting. Yeah. You know, like we're all, it is the same exact oh, okay, amount okay, of shots. Yeah. And then like when the first guy or even the second guy are hitting, like the third and fourth guy already have probably have clubs ready to go yeah. and they're just going to drop a ball and yeah. Yeah. Well, and there's also okay, like, yeah. the, like, so let's, if we're playing all our own balls, Jake and I go over to our ball, Jake hit Jake's ball. We have to wait for him. He hits his ball. Then, all right, now we're going to go to my ball. We go over to my ball. We have to drive over to it, hit it. And then you and your yeah. car partner, you drive. It's, it's just way more yep. driving individually. Yeah. I, I just, I you. disagree. I don't know. I, I, I think I, the one in this scenario where we have two carts and the one time it does, it's when you have one time it does take more. Is that like a scramble tournament where you have some freak fucking hardos that need to take a look? At every single ball. I know. And just really measured out. It's an like, easy to say. Like, well, this one is closer, but over here we've got more green to work with and we got a little better chance of leaving it below the pin. And it's like, well, just hit the fucking ball that's closest. Yeah, if 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 I'm or a scramble, not in the sand. If I'm in a scramble and we're debating on what shot, it, it it's it's no more than 10 seconds that that decision is being made. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, okay, if you're on the green deciding what putt you want to hit. It's like, well, which one has more left to right break? Mm-hmm. Um, or if one is downhill, one's uphill, but the one uphill is five feet farther. Let's just let's just go uphill. Right. I mean, like the, nine times out of ten, it's like you're just taking the closest ball. There are the few instances yeah. where the closest ball is a really shitty lie or this or that. But like most of the time you can get out of the shitty lie because you get a club length and a scramble anyway. Yeah. And you get three other shots. Yeah. So you never thought of of, of skipping skipping this group. Just going, going to, uh, no, I almost quit on hole six. So before you decided to quit, I feel the, the first thought is like, should we just skip a hole and go ahead of them? Uh, no, we never thought of that. Cause I just, I haven't played a full round of nine in a long time. And, and it, I it sucks to skip and a hole. I didn't want to have to come back and play it and then, or go play the three hole loop to get my money's worth. Like, yeah. It didn't. Um, when my wife gave me the, okay that she was going to go get the kids, then I was just, there was no skipping for me. Dude, that's atrocious. And that's it was like, actually I've, three hours and 20 minutes for nine holes is like that group. I, I'm and, and again, they should sh- be banned. shrink the game, expand the game. 
Um, and we're not we're not the hardos here to like just want to kick people off the course, but they they honestly shouldn't be allowed to golf out there anymore. No, and if they are, they should have a fucking supervisor with them, making sure they're they're going with it. The it was might be the only time I missed that old hard ass Marshall. Well, it's like like he would have he would have fucking set him straight. If yeah, you were plan on okay, I got to pick my kids up from daycare. What if your wife was gone out of town? Like well, that's, what, just that's to, what I was almost quit on six. Yeah, you'd have I to quit. I would have quit on six and got him. Yeah, because that was the closest one to the clubhouse. Oh yeah, I mean, wasting people's time, also wasting their money and all that shit is just. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, I had a very similar experience on Saturday actually. Well, here, well, we can wait on that. But so I finished. I finished the round. There's Jake in the parking lot. So you golf the same course. Did it speed up? Okay. Here's the thing. Alan after work is like, Hey man, you know, I got tea time at five o'clock at Osgood. You want to go over there? We can golf. And I'm like, sure, man. So we, after work, we go drive over to Osgood. And as we're pulling up into the clubhouse, the entire parking lot is full. And we get up to the, uh, whatever the person in the pro shop. And they're like, Alan's like, Hey man, I got a tea time for five, whatever in the, the guy working the counter is like, no, you don't. It's, <laughs> it's you got all the way up to the counter before you realize that you didn't have a tea time. And yeah, that's what he got. Well, because I just went and listened to him. It was couples. Yeah, night. they yeah, had yeah. all the tea times blocked off. So apparently Tyler must have been one of the last groups through. Apparently. Apparently. Um, but yeah, it was couples night. Thankfully, there's still the three hole loop. So we ended up playing that. And also, I just have a an unstoppable good attitude. So I wasn't that <laughs> mad about sure. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, but I mean, dude, fucking unbelievable. Alan had booked a tea time for Saturday mm. night instead of Friday night. So we drove all the way to the golf course. Dude, if it was any other golf course, we wouldn't have been able to golf. And I probably actually would have been mad, but, uh, and like, like Alan's a really smart guy. Yeah. Um, but it, it's like when it comes to simple tasks that, People not as smart can just like crush and just no problem. Like like booking a tea time for their correct day is one of the easiest tasks on planet Earth. <laughs> but like someone that smart, they literally give you a fucking calendar and you yeah. click the day and it shows M T W T F S S. Drop it straight down, find the day and then double check it. To confirm the reservation, because then it's spelt out. It's not even the first letter. It says Monday, <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. And if it says Saturday, ah, shit, that means we're not golfing Friday. Yeah. Um, simple like uh, simple tasks like that. I don't know how it doesn't click. Uh, yeah, something. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, too much other sh- shit going on in his head. But if we were to give him a Madden rating, his intelligence would be pretty high, but his Madden awareness would be like four. For yeah. sure. Yeah, it, yeah, it'd yeah. be a ninety-nine to sixty-four swing. Like, yeah, he knows be. exactly what you're supposed to do in all the pregame film and stuff. Like, he understands tendencies in the scouting report, but when it comes to game time, he can't recognize shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. it's also kind of the or same like way. Just with like, uh, yeah, showing up to the. Um, just showing up to the stadium on time. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, we need to be there at three. No, he, he thought it was a home game, but it was away. Yes, so he's yes. in the wrong fucking state. <laughs> yep, that's a good one. Um, yeah. Damn, I would have like, good on you, Jake, because I would have been like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, no, I was like, I'm, and the thing was, it wasn't just us two either. He invited a buddy. And like I said, because it was Osgood, we got mm-hmm. to play the three hole loop. Did you play it three times? We did play it three times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah which, played the three hole loop three times. Cheaper way cheaper it's it's, it would be it's four dollars cheaper to play the three hole loop three times than to play nine holes yeah it's it's a par it'd be a par 30 um because three four three um so yeah i I guess if you want to work on the par three like your your par threes it's it's a great yeah and there's actually i learned from the uh guy in the clubhouse that there's a couple hidden tea boxes and that if there's nobody out there you can play horse around you can play like a like a you call it type of thing where you can play from the hidden tea boxes mm. and it changes the distance on each of the holes Interesting. so you yeah. know the par four yep. there's a tea box to the left of the green of par four and you can play from that tea box to the hole of the to the green of the first hole. Interesting. Mm. And it yeah. becomes like a 214 yard par three. So if there's nobody Help out there out on that one, yeah, we're going to have to, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll have to huh. play them sometime. But yeah, anyways, um, still had a good time, whatever. He double booked the tea time. Apparently instead of the tea time being on Friday night, he had it on Saturday and he had another tea time already for, which Saturday. by the way, yeah, him and I were also already golfing <laughs> on Saturday. So that was, 
He had options. Should have sold the tea tank. Should have sold the five p.m. Yeah, no, brokered it. What I told him is that it was good because otherwise they charge you for a twenty-four hour cancellation or whatever. And we were at the clubhouse twenty minutes before the twenty-four yeah. hour uh, period, so I was like, "Hey, free cancel cancellation! That shit. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm cancel that thing." Um, yeah, dude. I mean, three hole loop, really good. Again, there was still just a shitload of people out on the three hole loop yeah. because whatever. So we ended up waiting. It probably took us. Again, almost fucking three hours to play the Jesus three hole Christ. loop hmm. three times. Um, but yeah, dude, we played Saturday at Rose Creek and um, immediately had to play through a group on hole two because they were playing so slow. Was at it? least they let you through. Great guys. Early. Yeah. They even like they were like, you guys could either like this. So they were on the green of hole two. They waved us through and we we're like, you know what? You guys just finish out. Go hit your tee shots on three, and then we'll play through. And then they were like, perfect. So they let us play through on three. Smooth sailing the whole way until we get to 10, and then it's backed up on 10. Well, it's backed up on 10. We play through that. It's backed up on 11. We play through that 12, that long par five. Mm -hmm. It's backed up there. And then by the time that we get to hole 13, that little par three, that yep. downhill, there are three groups on the tee box. What the fuck? Oof. And then we everyone plays through that. There are now four groups on the tee box of hole 14, all stacked up on on one tee box. So that's like the hidden one with the stop and go light. Yep, that's okay. that one. So there's us, the group in front of us, the group in front of them, the group that had just teed off and it hit their shots and another group in the fairways. So there are total and I'm assuming another group on the green in front of them. So there are now six groups backed up on one hole. And the group in front is two old ladies who are probably in their late sixties, early seventies. And so they're the problem, or was there like a booking issue here? Because this sounds too intense to be just the little old ladies issue. That's kind of what I'm thinking. It's also there were a lot of twosomes, and uh, so we ended up just pairing up with the group yeah. in front of us, and I'm sure some other groups did too, just to kind of keep things moving, which is the right thing to do, I think. Do you think uh, old people should have to take uh they should have to take some sort of um, competency test, competency test or, uh, you know, like usually you have to retake your driving test when you hit a certain oh, age yeah, yeah. or like before you can go off the diving boards at a swimming pool. You have to be able to swim across the pool um, like on your own, you know? Yeah. I feel like when somebody hits the age of, let's say, 70, because I feel like there's a lot of 65 year olds that are that are still like, I don't know, like Miles' dad is like s low 60s. Yeah, G. Dave, I think is 75. Yeah. 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 So like, let's say 65 or 70 is is the age limit where like you have to go out with someone from the course at like uh, a, a non busy time and you have to be able to play three holes at 10 minutes or under in order to like be able to uh, play with three other each people. hole 10 minutes or under correct yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's fucking you know, fast yeah, three, <laughs> no, three no. minutes a hole yeah no dude i i mean i agree I or think. you have or like or once you hit the age of like 65 or 70 you have to you have to ride in a cart <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah because yeah. It, and i get it like uh i i respect the older generation like getting out and walking and still like wanting to be active and moving trying around. not to die yeah exactly um just like s trying to stay as healthy as possible at that age um but when it comes to something like this i mean we can sacrifice uh you know a little bit of walking for uh, like other people's sanity and like out of the respect for the hundreds of other people who are trying to golf and keeping the pace of play going or just yeah i mean just the amount of money that they spent and all that shit like i I don't know about you, but I I still this year have not played around that even is remotely close to being done in four and a half hours or even four hours for that matter. It's like the course conditions have been shit. Like mm -hmm. honestly, like at this point, like I am just fucking like I'm just over golfing in Fargo. It, it sucks. Honestly, like, you're, it's fucking horrible. I, I like, don't golf in town anymore. No, the, it's the like, closest to town I'll golf is uh, Mapleton. It's genuinely the worst. Like I had a fucking borderline mental breakdown with fucking Alan on the course. And I'm like, dude, I'm I'm sick of fucking just throwing away money mm -hmm. at this. If the if it's an like, entire day's project now. Yeah, it's the worst. Like, dude, I'm all for people getting into fucking golf. But dude, I at this point, dude, shrink the fucking game. I, we, I'm so sorry. But well, like, your, fucking, your issue is you play in the evening. 
Dude, it just doesn't even think, matter what time I play. It I just, mean, I played at two o'clock. Yeah, but, well, and it okay, was so a three and a half hour. Fucking, I'll say mine was a morning tea time on Saturday. Yeah, on Saturday it was a morning tea time. We teed off at ten a.m. I th- see. I think if I think I think if you're playing like nine thirty or later, I think that's like because people are getting out of bed. They don't want to get up before eight thirty or nine to go play golf. But it's impossible to get a tea time any earlier. It also just that's doesn't why you matter. can't. That's why you can't play in town. You have to play somewhere I've, else. Just I, doesn't matter when I tee off. I've gotten the early morning tea times. I've golfed at five o'clock at night after work. I've done the weeknight round. I've done all that shit. It just doesn't matter where I go. It's always just atrocious pace of play. The courses are never in good condition. And the worst part is, is that on Thursday I played MCC with a buddy, mm-hmm. some country club, not to brag membership only. We fucking cruised, dude. <laughs> we fucking well, cruised. I mean, that it's is what every, appealing, every person in the comments, that's what they say. Every time we bitch is we'll buy a country club membership. Then I know like, it's not that easy. You can't just, not all of us can afford a country club membership well, on, a, also, on a whim. The only, the other, the, of the three country clubs in Fargo, only one of them is accepting new members. Yeah. So. Well, and here's a. So I, I still disagree with the shrink the game. The game needs to grow, but not in the numbers of people wise. We need more fucking courses. Yeah, that's true. Like if we had one more 18 hole course, it would decongest the current courses so much more. Mm-hmm. Like if Horace built a course like this town that we're in right now, just south of Fargo, if they built another 18 hole course, it would pull so much business in right away. That's true. And it, it truly would like think just four tea times from each course around town pulled away from it would decongest things so much faster. Yeah. Again, I just don't, I don't, you know, it, whether it's, and, and I don't think it can be city owned either. It's gotta be a public or it's gotta be privately owned and a public course. Yeah. Yeah. And open too. Yeah. Yeah. No, which I think that would be fine with Horace in different town. Yeah. I got a, we I got the fucking mayor's phone number. I'll give him a, give him a jingle. I think it'll have, I mean, it's got to happen eventually. Um, yeah. They should build one around the reservoir. It'd be kind of sweet. The right? reservoir. Right down the road. There's a reservoir down the road. It'd be cool. Oh, the, the diversion. Yeah. That'd be kind of sweet. I was watching this YouTube video the other day. I'll, and I'll bring this back around to golf here, but the YouTube video was about Costco and the reason why Costco is so successful compared to other like retailers. And it's not like the reason why the economics and all that stuff of Costco work isn't really necessarily due to them buying and selling things in bulk. Like that's not their big deal. Tyler's mic just broke. I'm just going to fucking hold it. I'm so sick of this mic stand. There you go. Um, but the whole reason why Costco like stays in the mainstream and all that stuff is because th- Simply their their sixty dollar a year or whatever it is their hundred dollar a year membership. What that does is it's not. It's essentially just a litmus test for people who like shoplift and all that shit, right? Like someone who is going to go to fucking Walmart and steal a bunch of shit and like you know treat ain't, the store ain't like paying sixty bucks. Yeah, they they're not going to pay sixty bucks a year for a membership, right? So essentially, what that sixty bucks a year membership is is it's a litmus test for like, do you have your shit together? Keeps the riffraff out. Well, it's literally also, that. Also, like yeah. it, it's harder to steal uh, three three ranch bottles <laughs> in one pack versus just one ranch bottle. Also on, true. The shelf. Well. Yeah. yeah, you can't so steal I, a laptop if they just you have to buy a piece of cardboard and then they hand you the laptop. Yeah, that's true. So where I'm going with that is that having that membership. That's why country clubs are faster. That's why country clubs are yeah. faster. However, there is also a way that a public course would be able to do that of like have an affordable membership, right? Still charge you for your tea time, still do everything like that, right? But just a just a little blanket cost membership, just as a basic litmus test of like, can are you willing to subscribe, quote unquote, to this golf course for the next year? Or yeah, or it's like, um, sorry. And I was looking through my rounds. I was looking through my rounds this year and the duration of them. Mm-hmm. So uh, three hours, thirty eight minutes. Three hours, twenty seven minutes. And those are eighteen. Uh, four hours, eighteen minutes. That was ox. That was that was at the country club, um, but it was like at a ten thirty tea time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, that's still normal time. That's not. Yeah, bad. yeah, yeah. That's, I yeah. would take that. two hours and forty four minutes for eighteen. That was me. Jesus that was me and two others at MCC. Yep. Um, and then the other ones are like three hours and four minutes, three hours and twenty four minutes. So it's been pretty standard. Um, but 
if the back to what you're saying, Jake, if they implemented something like that, like, hey, maybe you have to put a hundred dollar like deposit down. And if you're not back in this clubhouse in three hours, let's say, let's say under four hours through 18 holes, you don't get that hundred bucks back. I mean, yeah, I, I could, but then, that's okay. But the, that, the caveat to that is the people behind the slow group are like, fuck, well, I want to get my hundred dollars back, but I'm not going to because of this group. Yeah. Um, and maybe it's not something like that, but it's like, if you, maybe you just have to go check into the clubhouse after your round. And if you don't like, if you don't check in under four hours, you get a strike on your name and then like some sort of like penalty on that person or that group or whatever going forward saying like, Hey, you've had five straight rounds over four hours. So we're not gonna, we're, we like, we can't allow you to play here anymore because See, it's the only, upsetting other people. The big problem with that though, is that I have a strike on my record now because of the shit. That's yeah, in front. The not shit. nothing of my own doing. I know that's, that's the only caveat with this whole thing is like, how do you, I, know, I genuinely think that it's as simple as having a hundred dollar year membership or a $200 a year membership, whatever. It's something that people could just like, it's whatever. Spending $100 a year on your fucking Costco membership, everyone, no one bats an eye at that. But I mean, right? The reason they justify that too, though, with people is like, you're saving that $100 in at Costco. So like, how are you getting your money? What's making it worth it? Is it just the peace of mind knowing that you're going to play Dude, faster? If I, if I go to a golf course and they can guarantee me a three and a half hour round or nobody in front of me, or at least like having competent golfers around me, of oh, fucking course I'm going to pay $100 but, but a year. But Jake, then that's when you get the excuse for people playing really fucking slow and chit-chatting. It's like, well, well, I paid 100 bucks for this membership, so I should be like, I should be able to be out here and play at my own pace or like I should be able to be out here and enjoy it. You know? Jake, I, I, I do want you to, I want you to golf outside of Fargo a few times and just, I really think that this problem is localized to the cities. I agree. I, I 100% like, yeah, like it, my family, they golf in the lakes area all the time and they have none of these issues. I was bitching about it to my sister who's super into golf now. And she's like, oh, really? I, I can I can play 18 holes in three hours. Yeah. Even whenever I play in Minneapolis, it's fucking phenomenal. Like even mm. like when I play that, in that doesn't help Tyler's. Not at yeah. all. No, I think <laughs> no, it's just, just, is it just I, a Fargo issue? I, think think? Might, I don't think so. I, I mean, I you go on Reddit golf and you see it all over the place. I mean, yeah. the listeners will let us know like they've everyone's got to be experiencing this some some degree but like if we were to go to mapleton we're fine we go to castleton we're going to be fine we go to leonard we're going to be you fine holly you're going to be fine but we go anywhere right here in this city we're fucked i even got i got forest hills last thursday and um even that was like we had no one behind us and we had no one in front of us right i'm golfing forest. And that was at 5 30 yeah. p.m yeah i'm gonna go there this week during the fourth the time off for the fourth I mean, like, just do you guys remember, like, when we first started doing this, mm -hmm. when we first started golfing together in town, it was like we could get a tee time whenever, wherever. There would just be nobody. Right. The, there would be. Like, we could pick a day and we could shoot easily. Yeah. We could pick a day. We could have a round before before work. We could. It, it, it's it's grown, which is what we wanted. And now we're reaping what we sow. But yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. Are the people who are slowing the game down the people who are pissed that the game has grown with new people? It like is it the is it the new golfers that are slowing things down? I don't know. So, the dude. guys in front of me were not. They're they might be new golfers. I don't know. They had nice shit though. Because I don't feel as a new golfer, I don't feel like you're comfortable enough to chit chat. Yeah. On the court, like you're a little bit anxious about anyone getting close behind you because you're like shit why do I, I, maybe that's just how i think the, i don't know the the diagnosis of the why the group in front of us was slow is they were entitled and drunk Oof. they just like they didn't give a shit about anyone else and they were hammered yeah that's every case that i've ever ran, to, ran into except for these old ladies that's they, a completely different thing there's they, no fixing that they didn't know where they were yeah um is just that again it's the same thing with tyler like entitled or drunk or like just don't give a shit or yeah, like and you can <laughs> Honestly, I, I would way rather deal with just drunk people than and anyone entitled slows the game down. <laughs> yes. They just think they're better than they are. They act like they're the only ones on the course. It's yeah. they think that they paid. They don't they don't realize that everyone else paid to play the same thing in the same amount of time. It's it's a group that we, we joined uh, up with on Saturday. The two guys, there were two, I don't know, probably they're probably my age, whatever. But we were talking to them. They hadn't they had 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 only been golfing for about two years so still pretty new right. to the game i mean whatever but 
they were putting together a good paced round mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. And even they were like, dude, fuck this. Shrink the game is what the one dude. <laughs> yeah. I literally I was like, hey, man, can I join up with you guys? He's like, yeah, man, that probably go faster, huh? And then the very next thing he said is fucking shrink the game, dude. <laughs> um, I think we've exhausted this conversation. We have. We, yeah, have. Yeah. we, we have. move on. We're we just move on from here and, and like talk some more lighthearted. Let's, some let's more take a pop. break. We'll, we'll let's, change uh, our attitudes. I don't need to piss. Do you need to piss? I do. Can we just let's just keep rolling? Can I, can I please go to the bathroom? Okay. <laughs> we do have a bathroom pass. Hang yeah, on OK, wall. I'll grab it. OK, uh, something a little bit more positive. Hit uh, me with some happy news, again, Ryan. 78. 78 uh, day before my 31st birthday. Let's fucking hey, go. Just dude. a quick reminder that you still got it. Just a quick uh, reminder. In case anyone that, was wondering, that's only six strokes over par. That's only six strokes over par. Uh, 39 on the front. And 39 on the back. Let's go, Mr. Consistency. So going into the last hole, and it was a, a, a it was, let's see, we had an 8 a.m. round. Let's do a post game interview right now. Um, right here, right here. Uh, Tyler, okay. go ahead, you in the back. Uh, Mr. Sheely, uh, how are you feeling after that 78? I mean, I couldn't feel, I mean, I couldn't feel any better shooting my first sub 80 round of the year because last year I think I shot two or three sub 80s. Um, and this year to do it before, the day before my 31st birthday mm-hmm. is like, hey, age is only a number, uh, but the score on the golf, the, on the, the scorecard, well, that's also just a number, but damn it, will that make you feel good. <laughs> it's a nice number. Over I get, like, I, I'm getting older in age, but I'm getting lower in golf scores one time every two months. It's a good quote. You in the front. Uh, hey, now, Ryan, I'm just asking you a question, quick question here. Um, 39 on the front, 39 on the back. What helps you stay consistent? Uh, luck <laughs> i mean if you want me to give you the honest answer i'm not going to be i'm not going to be politically correct like all these professional athletes do if fucking luck um the driver was probably like 50 to 60 percent i think that helped a lot um i also think because uh my buddy my buddy adam my, my golf and golf and partner uh his son said i love him three putt poker um he was not playing the greatest so i think i was just also pumped about that um, but then Jade also Jade shot 42 on the front, which is, again, is like you shoot 42 front, 42 back. That's 85. That's my normal score. Um, 42 on the front kid goes 36 on the back, even par on the back, even par on the back goes uh, a three hole stretch. Birdie, birdie, birdie. Wow. Yeah. Dude. So uh, I, I don't know if I've ever witnessed three birdies in a row from people that I golf with, but it was quite impressive. I I don't. Maybe I've even, I don't know if I've even ever been in a scramble where we've gotten three birdies in a row. Yeah, we have. I'm, we might have, but like we have. That's still like we, we we pop off pars every once in a while when we scramble. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Have we? Have I we? don't know. Probably. Um, so having him golf that way, too, is kind of like, you know, a little extra push for me as well. Um, he's a sneak. He, he's a very unorthodox type of golfer, but he's sneaky. Jade, like he'll sneak up a decent score yeah. from time to time. We like to give um, him a hard and, time because he is perfectly capable of posting a 95 and a 75. In the <laughs> for sure. Weekend. Yeah. Well, and the good thing about this is at the Meadows, you said Meadows. That's my course. He can't yeah. cheat at the Meadows. Wide open. There's no losing balls and then finding Correct. them on accident. It's Correct. open fields, baby. Yep. Yeah. It's a Lynx course. Um, And I, I like I will say, um, OK, so g- going into hole 18, I want to say I was. I was seven over going into 18. Um, And if you know 18 at the Meadows, there's water on the left and there's just like open grass area on the right. So I'm like, fuck, if I'm going to miss here, I got to miss right. Missed right, thankfully. Nice. Um, Hit like a hundred yard chip shot that hit like the front of the green and it was a back pin. But the fucker rolled out like 30 yards. And no, which is great because I was like two feet from the pin. Oh, Nice. Um, okay. So I, I thought you went off the back. Like, yeah. I, so it I needed, like, no, yeah. I needed a par to shoot 79. I end up birdie. I end up going birdie on 18 to shoot 78. What a great way to finish. And I will tell you, um, if you are, if you're like me and like, I just looked in 18 birdies, my average score is like 86.2. And that's throughout. I think I have like 150 some rounds logged in there. If you're, if you've never shot under 80, 
I hope you get to feel that one day because it is an unbelievable <laughs> Exhilarating. Feeling. It's like you going into 18, if you know if you know where you're at score wise and you're like, okay, I need to par or I need to it, just bogey this hole to shoot a 79. Um, you kind of just turn on, you, you just turn it on at that point and you get a little bit more focused than you were. And I think that's the issue with a lot of people is that they lose focus towards the end of the round and then it just kind of like goes to shit. So I go 39 in the back. Normally I probably would have went 45 on the, or 39 in the front. I would have went 45 on the back cause I just lose focus. But when you're kind of like right there, fucking this close, you just turn it on a little bit and it fucking happens. Go ahead. Um, sorry, sorry to interrupt your press conference, Mr. Julie. Now that you've tasted tour level success and what some would call the zone state, what's the future look like for you? Well, the future that this was two weeks ago, remember, because this is pre, we pre-recorded last week. The future was an 82 last weekend um, with a breakfast ball. Mm -hmm. So that's an 82. Yeah. And, and I'm, not that. I'm not afraid to tell you an 82 with a breakfast ball is an 82 with no breakfast ball, you know? Um, and that was at, that was at Thumper. It was a tougher course. So pretty pumped about that. But then when you, when you, sh when you can, you know, you can break 80 and you shoot an 82, you're like, fuck. Like I, I, I double the hole and I triple the hole. So if I just knock three strokes out of those five over par, I'm right there again. Mm -hmm. So you start thinking about those strokes here and there and, um, it was a good feeling to get that get that checked off the list for the year because now I'm now I'm laughing. What uh, what's the gang doing Fourth of July? Well, the gang wishes that they would be out on the golf course, but I can't get a fucking tea time. So what if your boy gets a tea time in in the lakes area? In the lakes area, where at Perm? Four Hills. I see. That's a little bit. That's probably yeah. A but 50, you're gonna be on just drive. hit it on the way to the lake. I drive the opposite way. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but what time? What day and what time? I'll figure it out. Don't worry. I got a guy. So I did you golf. Tea time broker? Um, no, I, kind of. Yeah. G Dave, yeah. G Dave. No, is. no. Inside oh. source. Oh. If you're uh if if you ever golf in the in the DL area or if you've played Forest Hills, um, you you know it, it's a sweet course. It's super nice, but it will wreck you. Oh yeah. It, there, there's some danger out there. Okay, so I played but between the 78 and 82, I that's when I played Forest Hills. And it was a two man, it was a two v two, two man scramble. Okay. Um, and if I would have play, been playing uh, my solo score, I probably would have shot 95. Oof. Oof. Because if the driver's not on, then you're you're yeah. Well you're aft. Not true. G Dave, no driver in the bag. That's his home course. He knows how to play that thing like a puzzle. Yeah, but he but he's also hitting 180 down the middle. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, you don't need a big stick to have no, good scores. You don't at all. You just have you to have a straight stick. Correct. If yeah, if the driver is left and right, then you're screwed. Yeah. So you go from a 78 to a 95 to an 82. Hey, you know uh, what they call that, Ryan? Peaks and valleys. Range, baby. You got range. Mm -hmm. Peaks and valleys, depth, baby. Even. Yes, yeah. depth. So um, the golf game's been pretty good. Now here's the other end of the spectrum, you guys. Um, you know, been scrolling on TikTok a lot. I mean, every fucking TikTok you scroll past, it's like someone promoting this product or whatever <laughs> it is. And I got got. No, I got I got got swindled. I got got for uh, thirteen new grips for forty bucks. Oh, and those new grips. My dad's he doesn't golf anymore. Remember, I sold my dad and my old Mizunos mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, golf just wasn't for him. He's a runner. He likes doing he likes trail running, whatever. So he's like, I don't have time to golf anymore. So, like, OK, well, I got these grips for 40 bucks and I'm going to regrip my old clubs and uh, maybe take those out for another test drive. So between the peaks and valleys, maybe maybe a club change coming up here soon. Oh, I thought you got so you didn't get swindled. You just bought clubs. You're about oh, grips. I bought grips. So oh, I got, thought you got I, You were setting it up like these no, no, grips yeah. were like fucking pencil grips or something. No, no. I got got from the TikTok. Oh, uh, they, they the just. Prom, the yeah, product yeah. promotion. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I thought you were saying like you got, got like you, they, they fucked you over. No, no. Because in order, if you want to sell, like TikTok is actually a legit place to buy stuff from. Mm -hmm. Because if you break any of their rules, they'll just deactivate your account and you're screwed. Because <laughs> we sell, we, we sell you betcha stuff on TikTok. Um, so yeah, I got. They're supposed to be here today. 13 new grips for 40 bucks. And oh, I think so there's still an opportunity that you got got here. Potentially. Okay. I, I think it'd be fine though. I've had, I've, I've done really well with TikTok shop. Are they I, these ones? Yeah. 
Yeah, the, the, the 40 bucks for yeah. 13 of them. Yeah. Yeah, those are the ones. Sup- Supplezy. Classic <laughs> rubber golf grips, 13 pack. Well, no, they're, f- they're golf pride. Oh. Unless they're like golf, like uh, P-R-Y-D-E. Oh, like that. now I found these ones. Um, so, I'm, I, I, I mean, the, the grips I got for my PXGs were like 120 bucks. They're like Oof. 10 bucks a piece. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, I can't pass this deal. I can't pass up a good deal. Um, <laughs> you so know I'm anything gonna, about Ryan? I'm gonna regrip these these irons and give them. You're gonna do it yourself. Drive again because these my old clubs are player improvement, so they have big cavity back. Mm-hmm. And my new ones, like if if it if I catch them on the wrong day, I mean I'll hit a seven iron fucking one forty. Okay, it's like I, the sweet spot's smaller. And again, I'm just not that good. I'm not good to be able to hit the sweet spot over sixty percent of the time. So. Um, that's, that's what's been going on. I mean, life has been pretty, it's been pretty standard for me. I mean, you and Miles have got kids. You've been golfing a little bit. Miles hasn't been golfing. His golf game is He's golfing tonight, declined. though. He's golfing tonight. Um, I've just, I've been out playing. Are you fucking king of the castle right now, Ryan? I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of just riding, I'm riding the wave. You guys, you know, I had pit stop for gas. You had a kid. <laughs> um, and I'm just been kind of riding the wave. So yeah, this has been a very strange golf season for me. You started season off real high hopes. Break your fucking leg. Finally get back from the broken leg. Have a kid out of commission mm-hmm. again. And now we're here. Now I'm fine. I feel like I'm fine. Golf season is starting for me now. For sure. Which is like, hopefully you can get a tea time on 4th of July. Because if you wanted to get out this weekend, it's going to be very tough. No, I will, I'll be able to get out. I promise. I'll bet you right now that I'm, I golf more than once this week. I'd love to hear it. Love that. And I have zero tea times at this moment. It is Tuesday. This is yeah. why we have slow pace place to play because somebody knows somebody who fits them <laughs> in somewhere. No, I'm just, I'll get a tea time because I won't golf in Fargo. So yeah, that is. There's the true. secret recipe right there. I'm going to play this week at a course uh, out by my cabin. It's a nine holer. Guys, I shit you not. The clubhouse is a double wide. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Those are three my ba- favorite kind of courses. The dude. Best. Yeah. Three it's- bears, the no clubhouse vibe. Faustin which is a, a one room shack with no tea times. You yep. pay when you're done. Yep. Like th- I love those courses. You know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for a reliable, this is like kind of like a- Are you looking for a man in finance? Yeah, this, this is, this is kind of like a, like a dating profile type deal. Uh, I'm looking for a golfing buddy who is like willing to maybe travel out a little bit to, to new courses that have like, g- people give good word of mouth, um, uh, about about yeah yeah Yeah. um because i want to go play tips in a mounds where is that it's by elbow lake but it's like from fargo it'd probably be like an hour 45 from the lake it'd be about 45 minutes i can't find anybody that's willing to like a blueberry pines that'd be another one i want to go golf Mm -hmm. you still haven't Um, played it no because i can't find anyone that is willing to drive you know an hour plus to go play a cool course. I mean, like if, just for an afternoon. If I have like my kids taken care of, I will absolutely go to Blue Okay, Pines let's fucking do it then. Okay. Boom. Got that done on a max I project. I love that course. I know. And I've, I drive, I've driven by it multiple times and I'm like, and you told me about it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I got to play this My course. sister played it last weekend. She was blown away. <sighs> and she's just, she's played like nine holers and Frazee her whole life. So yeah, it's nice for her to see a cool course. Yeah, yeah, that that is a cool course compared to the nine holer and yes. Um No, no digs on Frazy. I love. No, that yeah, course. I love Frazy. Yeah, it's it's a great nine holer. Room supper there. <laughs> um. So yeah, no, I mean nothing, nothing crazy, nothing crazy going on, going on in in this camp. Yeah. You guys been watching any pro golf? None. Did you watch the Travelers? No. Scotty Scheffler, Tom Kim playoff hole. Yeah. Tom Kim sunk a putt to go to the playoff on eighteen. Uh, they go back to the tee box number 18. They both hit tee shots down the middle. Um, Tom Kim goes driver. Scotty Scheffler goes three wood. Scotty Scheffler is about 150 out and he's hitting first. And he puts one uh, where the ball landed was like two inches from the cup. Holy shit. And then it like it skipped forward and kind of checked up. And he probably had a th- like, I don't know, three footer for birdie. Mm-hmm. Tom Kim goes bunker. Oh, on his second shot. And it, I think it would have been, it would have been Tom Kim's first PJ tour victory. Probably. And I yeah. think it was just his, it was like, I'm pretty sure it was Tom Kim and Scotty Scheffler's birthday. Like that same weekend. Huh? Can we confirm that? I know it was Scotty Scheffler's, but 
I also think I thought Tom Kim it, won it one. It might have been his birthday is the 21st of June. Okay, so the 21st would have been that Friday. Yeah. It would have been that Friday. And yeah. then when is Scotty Scheffler's birthday? Um, Scheffler birthday. Hitting the keys June 20th. They have the same birthday. Okay, they have the same birthday. Wow. So Happy birthday were, playoff. Yeah, yeah, they were in a playoff. Can't make that shit up. The Travelers on their birthday weekend. That's and pretty sweet. Tom, I mean, the pressure. You the, blew it, Tom. He blew it. I mean, and they're buddies too, right? And I everybody uh, loves Tom Kim. What I didn't, what I didn't really like, or what I couldn't relate with, was Tom Kim was trying to he was trying to smoke and joke with Scotty Scheffler walking down the fairway from that play on that playoff hole. Oh, okay. So you know me. I'm always down to smoke and joke. Yes. In a situation like that, I probably wouldn't. I, I know. And you could tell Scotty Scheffler was like, I mean, he was kind of smoking and joking back, but he was also He's the uber apex focused. predator. He yes. you can't be smoking and joking with the the king of golf at the moment. He's a you, killer. You can't yeah. leave that opening. You can't no. leave an opening for Scotty Scheffler to take the neck. If I don't think this is the case just from watching full swing, I don't think Tom Kim was doing this on purpose, but that is a good way to try to take down the king, get in his head. Definitely. But obviously it didn't work because Scotty's throwing fucking darts left he's and right. He's a murderer. Yeah, he's so. been a fucking but, jail, dude. I don't <laughs> like he, he, dude, he's, he's on hard time, man. Yeah. yeah he's like, on three hours of hard time. Yes. Like it, the like what Tom Kim should have done is like gotten a minor uh on <laughs> th on Thursday, the night before his 20, because I think he turned 21, didn't he? Yep. Uh no, golden? he turned 22. Oh. Ah, fuck. It could have been okay. his golden birthday. Well, it, it, at least get like a open container or something on Thursday. <laughs> and like just be like, hey, can you just bring me to jail? Uh, so then like, yeah, you know, so, so I can have that edge, please. Yeah, so I can, like, I can, I can be looked at as like hard, <laughs> like that guy's hard, you know, um, there's not yeah. enough hard guys in golf right now. No, there's I not, like, it's just how, Scotty Scheffler. How do you expect to beat beat a guy who went to jail? You know, he's got that edge to him. Yeah, dude, he's seen some shit in his private it's cell. Tom Tom Kim <sighs> needs a fucking chip on his shoulder. Doing fucking yoga stretches in his jail cell before them. <laughs> That's a fucking apex predator right God there. God damn right. Jake, uh, argument. Let's go. You guys ready for my actual hot take about Scotty? Rare, I didn't even tell you guys about this. Either. Rare hot take from Jake. I'm extremely excited for this. You teased it before the podcast. Um, Guys, I think that part of the reason that Scotty is on the tear that he is on is because the strength of the competition in the PGA is not as good as it used to be now that the live is here. Hmm. That's not a hot take. You're absolutely right on the fucking money. Dude, I think I genuinely think that like, look, I'm not saying that Scotty's not an incredible golfer. It's not my argument here. I think he's still phenomenal. He's having a generational run. It's really good. However, Scotty doesn't have is this, six wins this year if Bryson is on the PGA Tour. I think you fucking nailed it. Yes, no matter what, even if they're still combined. He is having a, a fucking great year. Yeah. But is it this legendary year? that he is having with with the live players that's kind of what i'm saying dude i don't think i don't think that scotty has that many wins if bryson okay. or other people he, are on the tour he like, still might have a, four which is perfect, incredible insane. which is awesome he probably doesn't have six i know which is because here's the thing you can't like when bryson comes out and wins a major because that's the only tournament that he can play in against pga people and he just so happens to win that major his first major that he's won since he's been on the live. Yeah. For, yep. And so it's only a second one ever. He won the U S open when he was with the PGA. Yeah. And so it's like, he still clearly has got it. And there are mm -hmm. clearly other live golfers that are still phenomenal who just like, you so know what, what it's like? So, so what makes, sorry, go ahead. It's like, it's like the, it's like the non super famous PGA tour events that like have very easy strength of competition or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you just get randomly like some random golfer winning it. Like, I don't know, freaking Yeah. I don't know. Like Fina winning the three M yep. two years ago. Yep. It's like no one else was in that tournament. Of course. Besides Fina. Yeah. yeah. Of course he won. So, so like I, I, I want to help clarify because Jake and I are going to get fucking toasted on YouTube for this without a doubt. Yeah. Absolutely. Get toasted um, by me here in a second. He, is an incredible golfer. He is the best golfer in the world. Absolutely. But that, but that's not going to make the clip, so people aren't going to hear you say that. No, no, no. So that's how they're going to come the, after you. The full, the full YouTube video. People, oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So he is the best golfer in the world. Absolutely. Does he have six wins with all those all the with the live players playing in every single event? I don't think so. I don't think he does either. I mean, so Bryson only has one win on the season, and that is the U.S. Open. Yeah, he hasn't, no. he hasn't won at all on live this year. It's we're, also yeah. We're not saying that Bryson's better than Scotty in any way. We're just saying that one of those live players is going to beat him at one of those tournaments he won. Yeah, I'm using that as an example, saying that live players are perfectly capable of winning tournaments against PGA players. Yeah, we know that that's a fact. A live player very just easily could have won the Travelers. Yeah. Absolutely. If they were allowed to play in that type of stuff. But like golf is a sport where like any person in the field can get hot for a weekend. Right. Yeah. So it's and like, I don't think like, I don't think we can use like the live golfers at like as an example. But think about the talent pool they have. So every single PGA event, right? So let's Ra- say Rom and DeChambeau. Rom, DeChambeau, Kepka. Yep, still capable. Okay, sorry, yeah, Kepka. Okay, three. Still capable. I do. I just think here, let me look up standings from the... I got to d- be able to defend myself here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just... And I, well, like in the... And to the argument of anyone can get hot at any weekend, Harold Varner, Varner plays in, in the lift. He could get hot any weekend and beat Scotty at the Travelers. That's true. But like if all those guys are still playing together, I just think he has at least one less win. <laughs> okay, so five wins instead of six. I know, but that's at, at least. Sergio, think he's still capable? No, Phil? he's not, Jake. He d- he's not even qualifying for majors. Hatton, Phil, capable. Phil, wow, well, yeah. Hatton's not capable either. Terrell Hatton's good. DJ, how many wins does Terrell Hat- Hatton have? I don't fucking know. What's the fucking live? So I don't I, care. <laughs> Terrell Hatton <laughs> ate us alive at the Ryder Cup before he jumped ship. That is true. He's he's also just like he, he's uh. And I love it, but he's he's a head case. Yeah, I like I love the relatability of him fucking cussing out a, a <laughs> eight footer that he missed. Now I just I I I just disagree with you guys. Like I, I still think Scotty would be having an incredible year, but I don't know if it would be as legendary as it is if the full competition and both sides like Liv doesn't clearly doesn't have the best competition in the world either. PGA can't anymore either because Liv's not there. Yeah, there's no one true like this is where everybody goes. Except anymore. for the majors. Yeah, except for the majors. And Scotty, st- Scotty won the Masters. Bryson won the US Open. I know. We still have live players winning them both. That's what I'm saying. It's right. like it's like if the if the PGA tour was just like the be all end all of like this is where the best golfers play, mm-hmm. then absolutely. Scotty absolutely deserves it. But clearly, because live players are capable of winning majors of the biggest tournaments ever then the PGA doesn't have the number one like strength of field. It is stronger. Yeah, than I, the, it is stronger at, than the lives field, absolutely. but it is not as strong as it could be. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with you that um, the PGA, like their, their, the strength of players is not obviously not what it used to be. Yeah. Um, I agree with you on that, but I disagree so, with you that I, Scotty would still be having the same season. Um, it maybe would just be amplified because the strength of players is is there. And you you not. very well could be right. Yeah, Scotty could still be doing all of this with those live players on the PGA Tour, but I don't know if he would be. I still think he's incredible, and I I just don't think he has the same amount of wins. Yeah, I just. He's like he is human, and those other guys, like you said, anyone can get out any day. You're adding some of the best golfers in the world back into the pool. I'm just, I, All I'm saying is that I still think that there is like with the live being around and with Scotty having the generational run that he is on, that there is still just a tiny little asterisk over all of it, it, it which is kind of unfortunate. It's kind of, it's unfortunate. That's what I'm saying. Cause like, Look, man, it'd be when, different if he wasn't winning majors, though. But to win the Masters against that whole field. Absolutely. I agree. It's the biggest tournament ever. Yeah. I hey, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm saying he's still one of the fucking he's still the best golfer out there. Right. Hands now. down. Hands down. Yeah. No, no, I, 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 I know what case you're you're but like pleading th- for. Like, think about that run where he won four in a row. I believe him and Nelly Corda won. Yeah. He, both of them won four in a row. 
We don't talk about that if fucking Brooks sneaks in and wins one of those in that streak. But we don't know if Brooks would have snuck in. Like we don't. That, that's, you're right. That's, you're right. That, we never don't. Know. We that, don't. That's we're the whole thing because we're all, all speculating. Yes, yes. It's all speculation. It's all personal opinion. Um, the guy went to fucking jail, he, which is badass. Except he did nothing wrong, so it's not as badass. Yeah. But um, it's yeah, Jake. And not as hot of a take as I thought you were gonna have. So, I honestly thought that it, you. But would've... it is kind of a it is kind of a hot take. I just like I, I do think like. I don't know. I, I think I, I don't think there's got to be an asterisk 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 asterisk. Yeah, on I don't think there's an asterisk on it. OK, so I'm going to follow Jake's. um Warm take with a warm take of my own. OK, it might be a hot take just considering where I've stood on this podcast for the last get, three years. Get me fired up. Say something that'll fire me. This up. isn't going to fire you up. You're going to probably <laughs> agree with this. You remember how excited I was about the live for a change? And uh, I liked all of the the debating back and forth when it started. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of it now. I want them to combine. I want one league again. Yeah, I yeah, I do too. I, I I'm just, done. I'm done with it all. Yeah, I think Liv's kind of a joke. It's a fun experiment. I, I like. I think maybe the the PGA can definitely learn some things and make some changes that the Liv maybe inspired. And that would be a good thing, but I'm tired of two leagues. I want them back together. Well, yeah, it's like when everything first started, we were all like, oh man, like the live is going to, it's going to change. It's going to shake everything up. It's going to whatever. And now and we're, I still hope it does a little bit, but yeah. I, I hope it dies and I hope it gets combined back into the PGA and the PGA changes their policies a little. And also yeah, we're three yeah. years into the experiment right now or mm -hmm. by now, it's like really nothing has changed. In yep. fact, all it's done is made both things both bad weaker. product yep. yeah it's both are weaker two things worse is all it's done yeah and i mean i still think the head of the pga i think they're crooks um without a I, doubt I, I think like the demise of Roy mcelroy i think is fully in part because of oh they take they should take a, a huge part of the blame yeah big time mm -hmm. big they've time. wrecked rory's mental health i i agree um yep i think they are to blame for his uh not downfall because he's still playing really good, but like him being able to get over like the hump of winning again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I think live. Uh, and when I say a joke, I, I don't think the league is a joke, but I think like how uh, serious it's taken is a joke. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would love one league. Obviously the merger is, you know, we're fucking what two years or a year and a half. Past if it even it, happens, if it even happens. Um, and we again this is these are such casual takes um but it's kind of fun to talk about yep. um, yeah as guy a guy who shoots 86.2 on average per round yeah and a guy that banks his breakfast balls from previous <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i i would love one league again um i would like to watch a tournament you know on a saturday or sunday with all the best in the world playing mm -hmm. um whether it happens or not, we, we, uh, no one knows. Jury's out. Um, ending on a one last positive note on Thursday this week, we have a video coming out about a new golf game Ooh. called Zamboni. I did play it Ooh. on that round and on that 142 hour round for nine holes. Uh, the way Zamboni works, it is a two person game and each person gets a set amount of Zambonis. Uh, typically it is three zambonis per nine holes and what a zamboni is is when you're on the green and your opponent has a putt of a certain length you can call zamboni right so let's say ryan has an 18 foot putt with a wicked left to right i'm gonna call zamboni on him if ryan sinks that putt i owe him five bucks if ryan two putts from there nothing happens if ryan three putts from there he owes me five bucks. Mm -hmm. So you can call that three times per nine holes. If you don't call it before the round is up and you have Zambonis left in your pocket, every Zamboni left in your pocket is five bucks to the opponent. Oh, so you got to use them. So if you save them too long, you're, you could screw yourself. You got two in your pocket on holes eight and nine. You got to use them right there, even if Ryan chips two feet in. And the ball has to be on the green so for that you to call Zamboni there there that's a discrepancy so you can do that yes you can absolutely say the boundaries are the green but then you're it gets kind of like if you're not playing with really good guys there's really no chance of one putting if you're 
40 feet out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you can set a diameter. And what my friend Connor and I did, we set it as two pins. So you'd set the, lay the pins down on the ground sure. and measure it out. So if it's within two pins, you can call Zamboni because it's very unlikely that I'm going to sink a 20 footer, but there's a shot, you know? So there's actually some actual suspense to it. Sure. So you can set that limit. Um, you can make it the green, you can make it five feet, you can make it 30 feet, you can make it whatever. And you can also set the money limit. Like you can do a dollar, you can do whatever. Um, but yeah, so I, I like the three per nine. You can change that number if you want to Yeah. tweak it, have as much fun as you want with it. And it is actually a really good time. Um, Connor blew all three of his Zambonis immediately Oof. holes one, two, and three. Um, and I paced mine out. I, I knew the course better than him. I waited for the tricky greens and I just called it anytime I knew that it was a tough putt and we ended up fucking pushing. So unevent <laughs> uneventful end to it all. We, each one of us had a three putt, a two putt and a one putt. Interesting. Sounds like a fun game. Yeah. A lot of strategy involved. It was a good time. So, well, you'll see the full breakdown video this week. Yeah. And I, I will say it. If you struggle with putting and you want to and you want to just mentally get better at putting, um, when I played at the Meadows, we played three putt poker, and I still stand by three putt poker being one of the greatest games, uh, golf games to play with anybody of any skill level because it all happens on the green. Um, I ended up winning like sixty bucks with Hell three putt yeah. poker. I had seven one putts, um, and because we were playing three putt poker, I was more. Um, Mentally, I was just like, all right, just get this 20 footer close enough to tap in for a two putt. And then we go to the next hole and hopefully we can one putt and, mm -hmm. and get cards and not have it not three. I three putted one, one time and I one putted seven times. Um, ended nice. up winning some good money. Let's go. Cool. And uh, I feel like mentally just gets you, uh, it gets you in the right mindset on the greens. So uh, three putt poker video is also out there on the uh, YouTube page. You'll so, find it. Yeah. All about the golf games. All right. Cheers, folks. Another yes. episode. What Good episode back. We're on 195. Six. 96. Ooh, two hondo coming in. Ooh. Yep, coming up hot. Last episode. See you guys next week. Love you. Love you. Hey, you pipe that the wrong way. I'll call the clubhouse. We'll book another 18 for tomorrow. So. Okay, they cheated on that. They fucked their balls. Yeah, no better time for the breakfast ball than now. <laughs>